date and you have people say, oh, I don't want to do my DNA because I don't know what they're going to do with my test. <laughs> and I tell them, I get this a lot from men, and I tell them, I say, you go to the doctors, you give blood, <laughs> you don't know where that's going either. Absolutely. So you might as well do something, you spit in a tube, and you can see who you're related to. And that's so important that we know our history. Mm -hmm. So by me doing the DNA, if you see this other tree right next to that, um, I met a cousin and that cousin said, oh, um, I am descendant from Elder Mac Bunch. Well, you'll see him on my mom's tree and he is my great, great grandfather. Matt, the, the interesting thing about him is that he started a church in 1885 and the church still stands. In, 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 in Wilson, uh, North Carolina. Oh, that's where my mother was. I, I've been there. You have? Yeah. yeah. That's where my mother was born. And during the uh, Great Migration, her and my dad came to New Jersey, so I was raised in mm -hmm. New Jersey. Okay, that's how you. But always having there. that contact mm -hmm. with North Carolina, right. um, because my grandmother was so interested. And back then, I didn't really start working on this seriously since 2007 when I retired from mm -hmm. civil service. Mm -hmm. I spent 27 years uh, working for the federal government, mostly mm -hmm. with DOD. Mm -hmm. So we lived in Germany, we lived in Turkey, mm -hmm. we lived in Korea. Wow. And um, so then we would have like, you know, when they have something special, Women's History Month, African American History Month, we would set up a display yes. and we would sell books there. Now we yes. have over 5,000 books. Wow. So we have a lot in storage. So this is my mother's line, but um, this is my father's line, if you'll see on this um, wall here, my ninth great grandmother was Margaret Cornish. And Margaret Cornish was one of the 20 and odd. So you hear people talk about 1619, that's not true, uh, this didn't happen. So our ancestors were here before the Mayflower. You hear so much about the Mayflower. But, and then, people don't look at records. They don't read. So if they read, they would know that John Rolfe, who was the husband of Pocahontas, was the one who wow. said, we have nothing but 20 and odd Negroes ah. when they came off the ship. So, now tell me again, just to back up, 20 and odd, I'm not, Okay, so familiar with it. So that, words. so the twenty and odd are those Africans that were kidnapped from Angola. In fact, there's a special. Um, it's a movie now on Hulu. No, it's on Nef Netflix or Hulu. Which Netflix. one? Netflix. And they talk about Queen Najinga. Well, she ended up being a king but she was fighting with the Portuguese consistently, and that's where they stole our ancestors from. Is that the woman king? Is yeah. that the name of the movie? It's, she's similar, but no, it's, a, okay. it's another one. It's another one, because I'll, yeah. I'll find it. Yeah, I'll find it's, it. it's called Najinga. Oh, Najinga is Najinga. the name of the movie. Okay, Najinga. Yes, so Najinga um, fought them, but they ended up capturing many Africans and there was over 300 and some on a ship because people say oh what ship comes in with just 20 people on it they were part of a larger group and so there is documentation as I was saying that people think we of African descent can't trace our ancestry past 1870 well, in 1865, before um, 1865, our ancestors were just listed as woman or male. 
their age, whether they were mulatto, whether they considered them quote unquote black, which I don't use that terminology because that is a color. That is not an ethnicity. So because I did my DNA, I know my ethnicity. And like most people, we have varied histories. And I'm meeting cousins now from like the cousin that you met with the connection to Barbados. I just met a cousin, um, and this is on my mother's side too, with a connection to Bermuda. Wow. So that's why I talk about the African diaspora because our people, and if you don't know, you know, people might not know what di diaspora means, but it is a spreading of people. There's a Jewish diaspora, all different diasporas. So people of the African descent have been dropped in all different countries and a lot in the Caribbean because that's where the worst um, labor offenses happened. So on this particular wall, on what happened with Margaret Cornish, my ninth grade grandmother, when they got off that ship, they were sold for food because the Europeans were starving. Well, the wonderful thing about it is most of those people were not enslaved because there were no there was no such thing as chattel slavery back in 1619. So they were treated most of them as indentured servants. And so she is one of those people who was treated as an indentured servant. So those are actual documents that have has her name on it. Uh, I can't tell you enough, you know, how how grateful we are to meet you today. Today is a very special day. Today is a day my husband and I are, are experiencing a vacation like no other. It's far more than what are we going to eat, you know, uh, what time are we going to uh, have dinner and that sort of thing, and mm -hmm. what are we going to do today. No, we did Gigi today. <laughs> okay, we did Gigi well, and Skip today. That's yes. a blessing. So, and that in, it is a blessing. Mm -hmm. and Look this way, Mel. We are happy to be here. Uh, we encourage everyone and anyone to visit Gigi and Skip's business that is called Best Richardson African Diaspora Literature and Culture Museum. And the address? And bookstore. It is 30A St. George Street in St. Augustine, Florida. Wow. And St. George Street is like the main street that everybody walks up and down and so we're in a courtyard in back of that main street but we have a sign on the street directing people back here. Well, you better believe that uh, we are going to, no doubt about it, put the word out that you're here, willing and able to share information, uh, that you're willing to show people uh, how to uh, get into their DNA, to find out their ancestry, and to do genealogy studies. And we and, thank yeah. Gigi for that. <laughs> you're, listen, I'm going to tell you right now, you're hired right now. <laughs> but you, there was one thing is, uh, that you said about black men not wanting to, to do the genealogy mm -hmm. thing. Well, you know, my, uh, my mind said the same thing mm -hmm. that you described. But because you said what you said, you're already giving it up. So you might as well find out about right. yourself. That's, what, that's <laughs> the way I tell them. Right. So many ways. That's what I tell them. So before you knew what you was doing, you, you've Absolutely. been giving it up. They know. Mm -hmm. That's right. They know, so you know now. Yes. Go ahead and do yes. it. Yes. So know, when I did my DNA, you changed my mind to yes. just now. Good. Good. <laughs> Good. So when I did my DNA, mm -hmm. I have East African, West African, which we've determined to be Nigerian. Mm -hmm. Both my husband and I are. Um, I'm 26% Nigerian. I think he's 23%. Oh, but God. we actually went to the commemoration that they did in Hampton um, because that's where my great-grandmother was 
that ship, that's where it came into mm -hmm. a place called Fort Monroe. But back then, it was called um, Point Comfort. And it changed, and so then those people went down into Jamestown. Mm -hmm. um, some with the governor, some lived in his house, some lived in other very yeah. affluent mm -hmm. um, people's mm -hmm. homes mm -hmm. and worked on gardens and property mm -hmm. and things like that. So uh, let's move on now and we're going to go I, to the I museum. Would love, uh, okay. uh, uh, please to get, get, get a wonderful. Yeah, well, you were speaking about um, you know people had made uh, donations to you, books, things like that. Yes, because we sell used, new, rare. We sell um, books that are out of print, and so a lot of times people have books on their shelves that they're not using, and so we get donations, and most of those donations we accept now are books of the African diaspora. We've been given <laughs> a lot of the modern fiction books. We mm -hmm. bought some of those, um, like um, James Patterson, books like that. Yeah. But um, because he writes so prolifically, mm -hmm. then um, we would get some books and people would say, oh, no, I read that one. And they'd want you to go find them. So now um, anybody who sends us any books, um, of the African diaspora, we appreciate them because maybe you're not reading them anymore, but somebody else might want to read them and learn something. And I'm an author too, so this is probably a good time to talk about my book. It's right over there. Excuse me. Yes. That gold right one right there. Yeah. yeah, I saw this on the... Uh, you saw it on our website? Yeah. yeah, hold your book up. Okay. Hold your book up. Move your fingers so that we can get a clear shot of that. So this is, you ready? So this is the book that I wrote, which is Thomas the Melungeon. Um, a lot of people didn't know who the Melungeons were. Um, there are people who've been told, oh, your family has Melungeon. So one of the things that I wanted to do was show a different side of our history. And my second great grandfather was a free man of color. And he entered the Civil War on his 18th birthday. So his picture is not on this book, but that's his aunt who raised him mm. and um, also his son, my great grandfather, Daniel Fuller. So I wrote this book, and we actually went to visit um, the places where he was stationed. I have family pictures in here. My grandmother and grandfather owned a store in um, a little place. It's right outside of Goldsboro, North Carolina. And this church here was built in 1898. So it goes through, and the good thing about it, it helps genealogists because we have a family group sheet. And so that family group sheet mentions all the children of the family and it goes back. And then in the very front of the book, we have something, the pedigree chart. And so I showed y'all the ped pedigree chart from my mother. So this pedigree chart, wait a minute, I'm trying to get to that page. This is Thomas's pedigree chart, which is mine, mm -hmm. but I started it here with him, and it goes back to 1665, and that's that court awesome. record that I showed you mm -hmm. here on the wall. Mm -hmm. So there's documentation, and so in here it also shows my grandmother's sisters and brothers, and portraits are so important because uh, my family were told that they had native ancestry. When I do my DNA, I have native ancestry. So, but a lot of people, you know, didn't know how they had it. So in this book, it goes back to, um, there's a cousin that I have um, a picture of in here. 
and his daughter has on a Native American coat. So, um, and this is a picture of my great grandmother. So it's it's um, genealogical, but it's also written like a novel right. because I talk about the people and what their lives were like, and um, you can get up front and personal. Yes, like yes. And instead of reading facts. Yes, and it's wonderful. not a sad story. Wonderful. It's a wonderful story because with you being military and my husband being military and he's disabled and he knows what he went through to try to prove his disability. Mm -hmm. Well, back in, they didn't start doing the pensions for the Civil War into the early 1900s. My grandfather, great-grandfather fought for years trying to get his pension. By the time he got it, all his teeth had fell out. Oh. He was almost blind, Ugh. but he finally got his pension. And um, so that's in the book. Okay. And on, the, on the back, that's my mother who passed away at 93 from COVID. Mm. Oh. Yes, and that's me. <laughs> she that's went through all baby. what she's all gone through those in years. Life. Yes, and COVID. Yep, in North Carolina. So, well, you know, when you were speaking the, about the, people donating okay. things, <laughs> you know, one okay. thing one thing I, I find out a lot is that people have things sitting in their homes, especially yes. when they get Come up in age here. like we are. Come over yes. here. Yes, that um, you have things in your house, and you say, "What am I going to do with it?" Nobody yes. wants it. Yes. And then you you might do something silly like donate it to the thrift store yes. when they could donate it to you a yes. museum such as yourself. Yes. With with all these little artifacts, you know, for for you, it does, if you sell it, you're not going to get much for it. Yes. But send it somewhere where it can be banked and and used and and, sp right. and spread to your people again. Yes. That's my, my commercial. That's the way I feel. And we're going to search for our things if we've got things we're not used. To. Yeah. <laughs> we're yes. Yeah. Like, exactly. you have very we have, you do have some. Yes. You can't yes. pass it on to nobody. Nobody yes. wants it. Our young people, they're not yeah. interested. And I get this from women who were missionaries mm -hmm. in Africa. Right. Mm -hmm. And they bought me. When we go in the museum in mm -hmm. a minute, you will see these wonderful artifacts mm -hmm. from Nigeria, from Ghana, from all the different places in Africa that I have not been a mm -hmm. able to go to yeah, time-wise. Right. Mm -hmm. And so it's really nice to know that it will be shown, people can see it. And given a home somewhere where yes. it'll be used and spread right. amongst your, your people, even though if you're right. not using There's it. There's one thing that I, um, that uh, I, I, for years and years, I collected black memorabilia postcards. Oh, yeah. oh, yes. I mean, I was collecting 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. So I have the lines that are all authentic, you know, no, none of this reproductive right. stuff. Right, well, we have to come back and share a show of that. And, yeah. uh, no, I'm not going to do it. Because you know <laughs> what, my, my, uh, we have no children. Okay. My niece and nephews, my great one, they're, you know, they, I show it to them and they, you know, they look at one. Or two. It's in an archived, I archived them in a book that's, uh, 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 acid free, <laughs> free okay. that okay. kind of thing, so that it's th those cards are very protect, uh, very um, protected. Right. And uh, I, that's something that I had. It was resting on my heart. I said, for years, I, I was collecting them when it wasn't popular. Yes. To yes, do that, I was yes. collecting them before internet was right. Big, right. you know. Yes. And uh, you know, it's interesting to me because they were using. African Americans to to for ads advertising yes, for one yes, thing, yes. and the and the other part was that 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 got that always gets me every time the pictures of the postcards that were actually mailed to relatives right. by white people, and the picture on the front of the postcard <laughs> was so degrading and so inhumane. Yes. But you sent the card and, and it would say, Hi Aunt Mary, how are you doing? How are the kids? Well, we're all doing well here. We hope that uh, we, your, things are going good with you and we look forward to your next visit. We love you so much. Cousin Mar cousin Susan, uh, see, you, see you next month. Mm -hmm. But the other side of that card, yeah. oh God bless you and God is blessing us mightily. Yes. They say stuff like that. God is blessing us mightily. But the other side of the card is something so 
devastating. It, it yes, could yeah. be a, a lynch. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you yeah. send a postcard like this, yes. and others it would say it would say like uh, uh, maybe it would be a postcard of women, and they hardly had any clothes on, and mm -hmm. you know, of course they they and, emphasize and, the, and the most degrading, yeah, you know, black uh, yeah. yeah, and yeah. they would say things of. like you know, uh, son, you got it before, son, uh, don't wait too long to get you some of this. Stuff like that, and 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 I would say this is what people send in a postcard, mm -hmm. and you know, and it was and every time they did it, they said put God on there some kind of way. You know, what I mean? yeah. continue to continue to trust in the Lord. Uh -huh. <laughs> Area and put my books on it like like Gigi got this. Cause I got a lot of them, but I'm praying now that I, I we have so many books and. I had nowhere to keep all these books, and they was just in a garage in boxes, and that's no good. The no. garage sometimes 150 degrees out right, there, right. or 110 at least. Right, right. And uh, I said, to him, yeah. <laughs> and I said, I don't know what we kept. I know we kept a lot, and I don't. Uh -huh. But my books, I, my whole life, my books are my friends. Yes, definitely. My books are my friends. Definitely. I'm an avid reader, uh -huh. and uh, always have been. When other folks was. You know, oh, this and that. I was at home in the bed somewhere with a book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, so, uh, speak yeah, you can speak on this one here. Let me. Um, what you need, darling? Let, let me have that okay. chair, okay? Okay, I can stand over here. So this one, yeah, I need to okay. hold this one here. Okay. And, uh, I can just go back here and, and or skip look. Or bring you another chair. No, I don't need no chair okay. here. I'm fine. Okay. I can just let my eyes graze. Okay. Okay, so the reason why we started this museum, we started in 2018, was because a lot of people that I was meeting um, didn't know much about the literature of the African diaspora. And I was keeping all these books at home on my shelf and I was realizing a lot of people can't see them or don't know they're there. And so many of these books are out of print, um, first editions, and because our ancestors who were enslaved were forbidden to read and write, some of them were punished, some of them were killed for reading or writing or trying to learn. So we have different museums of sports and things like that, but it was very important to me and my husband to develop a museum of the African diaspora. And again, I say this includes our African writers. It includes our writers of Cuban descent, our writers Haitian, um, so the whole diaspora, it's like bringing us together. In um, college, I learned about Paula Marshall. And also, when you think about the man with the hat, they call him, um, Marcus Garvey. People that did not, were not born here, but meant so much to America. So one of the things that I found out, this, this wall here, this has a lot of my Egyptian books. And I went to Egypt um, for my birthday in 2003. And when I was growing up, guys would say stuff like, my Nubian queen. And I hate to admit that I didn't know Nubia existed. When I went to Egypt, I went to the Nubian Museum. And those Nubians are the precursors of the Ethiopians, and they were the fighters for the Egyptians. And they were actually 5,000 years older than the Egyptians. And so in school, they tried to teach, tried to teach us that Egypt was not in Africa, that it was someplace different but Egypt is on the continent of Africa. So um, Mansa Musa, we have a book about him, richest man in the world still. He could buy and sell people with gold. He had so much gold that he put countries out of business. And they say if you look at his wealth today compared to the richest men in America, he's 
richer than they are. And this right here has to do with a lot of women that we don't know about or hadn't learned about. Harriet Jacobs, she was a woman who lived in her attic for, couldn't stand up to escape being attacked by the owner the, of, of, of that plantation. This is mod, about modern Medea. When you look at the movie um, that um, Oprah did and you talk about what happened here, this was a lady who had been attacked by the plantation owner and had three children by him and she decided to run away and kill her children so they wouldn't have to be enslaved. Well, they caught her and she had been only able to kill one child. And so you think about that, why would a mother kill her children? But if you know anything about the horrific conditions of enslavement, then you can understand why she did not want her children to be enslaved. Also, we have the African American women writers, uh, the Journal of Charlotte Fortin. Everybody, most people know about Ida B. Wells and how she had oppressed and tried to fight against lynching and they burned her presses and she had to open it again. Um, this one is about Susie King Taylor and Susie King Taylor um, actually fought as a um, person in the Civil War as a woman. And this one is called Within the Plantation Household and it explains how the women, the European women had it almost as bad as the African women because a lot of times African women had these children and the mistress of the manor, as they would say, had to look at these children every day and know that these children were their husband's children because they looked just like them. And the sad thing is, Frederick Douglass was an example of this and they sold away their own children. So when you look at um, the fact that we have a first edition up from slavery, we have books by um, writers that wrote many, many years ago. We have the first African-American author to be published was William Wells Brown. We have books from the Harlem Renaissance, Plum Bum, uh, different pinch, the story of the pinchback. And so over here we have Maya Angelou's poetry that she wrote on the Pulse of Morning um, when they was, it was, I'm um, sorry, Clinton's inauguration. We also have information about the women in the Revolutionary War. So all of these books, and uh, um, the other thing I want to say is about, we concentrate a lot on the Gullah Geechee history. For those people who don't know about the Gullah, the corridor goes from Wilmington, North Carolina, down to St. Augustine, Florida. And so these were the people who were on the coast. And when you're told that the Africans brought nothing here. That's not true. They went to certain places like Sierra Leone mm -hmm. to kidnap Africans who were rice growers. And these are women who grew the rice in this area along the corridor and made South Carolina rich Mm -hmm. and which made America rich because that was the first um, incident of commerce though it was with people and so the same thing is happening with the Gullah Geechee people I research mine and I descend from the Hamiltons and the Hamiltons were on the Fusky Island 
and one of my great grandfathers, um, great, 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 is buried there. And there's a book right here that talks about the Fusky and his name is in there. So um, just looking at what we have here, y'all are free to look around and see what other books that you might think are um, unusual, you might not have seen them before. Um, all of these baskets were made by the Gullah Geechee women in South Carolina. And that basket, those, some of those women went to Sierra Leone and the baskets were almost identical. And we're talking about after 400 years. And that's what's so awesome about the Gullah because they were on the coast when the enslavers left that area, they left them there and they could still communicate. If you hear them speak, it's quite different. They sound kind of like Jamaicans. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of a, a patois yeah. that, um, which is a combination of African and European. So walk around the museum a little bit and see what you think. Okay. Thanks a lot. I'm going to close it out and just stay there. Once again, Gigi, we thank you. <laughs> we thank you for, for the time that you've given us, the personal uh, time you've given and the information that you've given us because you gave us, my stomach is full. They say food for thought. Well, you, I went way past the thought. Now it's, now it's, 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 um, it's embedded in me. And, uh, and, and we thank you for that. We shall return. We shall uh, put the word out again that you're here. Uh, the world needs to know that Gigi and Skip exist on this earth, right. that you have a purpose and that you're working that purpose out. And, and we need information that we have no idea about and right. we do know. Right. So we ask those who might see this, consider Gigi for, uh, as a guest speaker at your events. She has a lot to tell you and a lot of information we as a people need to know. And once again, Gigi, God bless you. We thank you. And this is just the first of many visits. Okay. I'll be back again and again and again well, and one more again. You. And every time you come, you'll learn something new. Yes. We can promise yes, you that. Yes. yes. Thank you again. You're very okay. welcome. Okay, good. Turn that off. So, yeah, we, we got a lot of good stuff here. We'll, we'll yeah, work it back. Work on it and work yeah. on it. And so, that's the it. first yeah. edition. Yeah. Booker T. Washington, yeah. I'm from slavery. Yes, 1901. Mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going home now and get out in that garage. <laughs> 110 degree weather out there and find some How stuff. far is it from where you live to here? Oh, oh well, we had the people could About four and a half hours. Okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. There's so many things in here that I looked at. I'm like, where are our folks? We have like American the, Black Folk Tales. Mm -hmm. We have you know, some first editions. Remember Ruby D. And uh, what was the husband's name again? Uh, Ruby D. And I forgot, but whatever. And, anyway, but we. We've got one book, Ruby D. We did her book sign. She signed the book for us. Oh, yeah. We have many signed books in here. Yeah. And that, you see that little, it's like a bow. Yes. It's really a mu musical it. issue, mm -hmm. instrument. Mm -hmm. I got that from the Nubians. Mm -hmm. A Nubian man made that Whoa. when I was in. You, I looked at that and I said, at first I said, hmm, is that a bow and arrow? But I said, no, mm -hmm. I think it's more of an instrument. instrument. Yeah. yeah. The more I looked at it, the longer I looked at it, the more I said, oh, that's it. That's it. But I look at things over here. No, you know, it's so think of too. I uh, I wanted to watch these again, but we've got these things uh, way back. I can't. He was back in the seventies and eighties. He was always on TV a lot, and we got a couple of those uh, videos where he's showing Black history. You know, white lies, black. Oh, lies. he yeah, oh, he's yeah. deceased now from New York. Yeah, yes. I know exactly who you told. He wore glasses. Yeah, yeah. you look something like him a little bit. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Okay. Well, oh so goodness, well. I forgot his name. Yeah, we say things from like the '60s, stuff like that. Yes. Conversations. Yes. And, yes. and, 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 and you see, we have an old yes. emerge book. 
We have a lot of Ebony's, yes. they're probably in storage because mm -hmm. we have many books in storage. But yeah. keep praying for us that we find oh, a larger building, a larger place yeah. that you can display your things. Yes, yes, of course. So that's yeah. what you got two more people now on the case. Okay, <laughs> yeah. good. I appreciate that because that's what we need. Exactly. You know, like they say, no, it takes a kids. village. To raise exactly yeah. to raise a new museum, right? Right, right. <laughs> or to keep the existing one going. Yeah, and we will we'll help you do that as, in in any way that we can. I want to show you this picture right here. This lady was the only female uh -huh. in the Civil War. I mean, no, she was a um, not Civil War. A buffalo soldier. Mm -hmm. Right. But do you know, I saw it up there, I did not know that she was a buffalo soldier. Mm -hmm. And I've got a whole display on buffalo soldiers. Mm -hmm. Remember, I, you know, my, my, yeah. I, yeah, I want this, I have this in my, I put this by my pocket. Okay. So okay. that way, you, you laid on that one. Yeah. And I've got your own. Because I was, you know, I was meant to ask you, I just, it was interesting to mm -hmm. me. And I know if you are selling uh, that, mm -hmm. that it had to be real. It wasn't yes. just some, yes. you know, some. John it, Jones yeah. painted at that picture and he's very significant when we go out here okay. sure. yeah because i saw that, that one but well, just to say that you just told us that we never knew that there was a, a woman a who woman. was yeah. a buffalo shoulder yeah she that. pretended she was a man mm -hmm. and so um, she could, switched her name around but then when it came time for her mm -hmm. to get her pension they wouldn't give it to her because they said you had no business being here anyway you know, it seemed like I remember seeing a movie where that really? happened. Mm -hmm. Her name was Cache Williams. Mm -hmm. But when she went in, she said her name was William Cache. I want to write this down in my little pad here. Okay. Uh, I put that there because I, I found that to be very interesting. The mere fact that, it, you know, being a woman and all. Mm -hmm. And I, um, mm, mm. yeah. So, yeah. I want to write. I'm going to put this right here. 